But you know, it don't, we used to sing a song, it don't matter what the world says. Ready or not, he's coming again. Amen. I won't be ready, don't you? I'm glad to be uh, back in Pine Grove. Uh, and uh, appreciate the opportunity. He called Brother Sparks Friday, just checking on him. He said, that much more going on with him. He said, can't come Sunday night. And I was hoping he would say that. Amen. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here. Amen. Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter number 15. Appreciate the offering. We didn't come to that, but thank you for your giving. And uh, Luke chapter number 15. I want to confess to you tonight as we try to read these scriptures. Don't know how much preaching we can do. But uh, I'm just going to preach you my heart, amen, where I'm at. Don't know that you could call it or justify it to be a sermon. Don't know even how far we'll get with it. But this is what the Lord's been dealing with me about, amen. Luke chapter number 15, verse number 11, very familiar scripture. The Bible said he, and, and he said a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them all his living. Not many days after, notice that, he didn't leave immediately, but not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And when he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough in despair, and I perish with hunger? I will arise. Amen. James chapter number 1. James chapter number 1, verse number 23. Amen. Just jump around here a little. The writer said, for if any be a hearer of the word, not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. One more verse, very familiar right now in the time we're in. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Amen. We all know it by heart. The writer said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. Read the first three words again in that verse. If my people. Amen. Would you stretch your hand to heaven and ask God to help us? God, would you move tonight? Lord Jesus, would you help us on time and on us? Lord, if you don't, we can preach the Lord, we're believing and trusting in you. God, that you know just exactly what we need. You know exactly what your people need. God, there's hungry hearts. We're in desperate need of revival, the move of God. But you must send it in Jesus' name. We'll not fail to praise you. Amen. I won't start by saying I don't want to take it out of context this evening where we jump from these scriptures. Amen. But I, I want you to notice there where I read to you uh, about that prodigal. We all know that story by heart. We've heard that preached ever since we were small children. And we've been reared up under that about that young man that uh, did not use wisdom and what the, the father being a type of God had gave to him. And we often put him amen, in that place of a sinner. Uh, that's automatically where we go with that. And we always preach to that backslider or that one that it's obvious that they fell into a life of sin. And I want you to know, amen, that word riotous that was there where the Bible said he wasted his substance. Amen, old riotous living. That word riotous, amen, just meant reckless or wasteful. Amen. So in essence, I don't know, we imagine that he might have squandered it with gambling and prostitution and drinking, but we really don't know exactly what he spent that money on. But all that we know was he got himself amen, in a place where he didn't belong and he used his inheritance in a way that the father never intended for it to be used. Amen. He did not use good wisdom with what God had gave him. I want you to notice there in James chapter number one where we read to you about the man, amen, being a forget 
faithful hearer of the word. The Bible said he behold, and that word beholdeth in the Greek meant he took note of or perceived himself. He considered carefully or discerned. Amen. His natural face. Uh, that face, amen. I call it the natural man. Or that face, amen, from birth uh, of who he was. Uh, amen. He considered who he was, but straightway or immediately, uh, amen, he left. Uh, amen. I thought that mirror, if you will, and forgot who he was. Uh, if there was ever a type in the scripture that described this verse in the book of James, it would be that prodigal boy. Amen. That as he was there in the house in those times, uh, and they didn't have glass mirrors like we do. Amen. That, that, that you can see every little, amen, little bump, every little hair out of place, every little age spot. Uh, I asked Sister Courtney sometimes, uh, amen, I'll hear her getting ready. And I'll think she's had plenty of time to get ready. And I'll make my way. Amen. We've got one bathroom. Amen. And there's five of us. I'll make my way to the bathroom to get ready for church. And I'll open the door. And everything, amen, there in that bathroom, this little small bathroom, is right there at the door. I'll hear her with the door not meaning to. And I'll say, I thought you was done. Amen. Already ready. Get the children ready. She said, no. I'll say, what are you doing for so long? Amen. There she'll be in the mirror. Amen. Some of you sisters probably can relate. Amen. But you know, we can see a lot and learn a lot. But in those times, they would take those old metal plates. Amen. And they would hang them on the wall. And it would give them an image somewhat of who they was. Amen. It might show them a little bit about their shirt. Amen. Or their visage. That they probably could tell us in an old photograph. Amen. Who they were kin to or who they belonged to. I want you to know tonight, amen, when you look in the mirror at yourself, amen, all you can see, I can usually see how I resemble, amen, dad's family, and I can see how I'm aging, and I remember back what I was like when I was a boy, amen, I looked at my son, amen, him looking a lot like I did at that age, amen, whenever I look at myself, there's a history that goes along with it, but I want you to know, amen, we're going somewhere by the help of the Lord, that young prodigal, uh, he never stopped to appreciate, uh, amen, what and all he could see when he looked at himself. Uh, amen, he never stopped to acknowledge, uh, amen, whenever he looked in the mirror and he resembled that good dad, uh, amen, that tended to that farm. Uh, he never saw, amen, his history. Uh, amen, but he just saw a young man that he felt like had it all going on. Uh, and he said, I'm so and so. Uh, amen, the son of so and so. So, uh, amen. I don't want to be a farmer forever. Uh, amen. I know who I am, but I believe I can do it my way. Uh, amen. And he went out. Uh, I want you to know he never intended to get where he did. Uh, amen. But because of his wastefulness uh, and him not sitting down to count the cost of the tower of mess that he was about to build, uh, the next time we find him, uh, he's joined himself uh, to a citizen of that country, uh, feeding the swine. You know a Jewish boy didn't have no business in the hog pen, but that's right where he was. Amen. Oh, he left that good place at home. He left those fine clothes like we've always preached about. He left that warm bed. He left that place at the supper table. He left that place at the barn. Amen. You've heard it all your life. Amen. But I want to tell you, friend, amen. It took him getting where he was to realize who he was. Oh, glory to God. Amen. The Bible said, whoever so look at the end of that perfect of all of liberty and continue to tear in. Now that word looking in the book of James I meant to stoop down and to peer and to look intently. I want you to know, I don't know for sure, amen, but this is just the way the Lord dealt with my heart. I believe it had been a long time since that boy had saw his reflection. I, I believe he was hungry. I believe he was disoriented. They meant to stay and somewhat out of his mind. Amen. Can you imagine sticking your head right down amongst a bunch of hog heads? And while they were snorting, they meant to eat and they meant you smell and want to join right in. The Bible said he would have pain. Feel 
filled himself with the husk the swine did eat but no man gave to him that sounds like there wasn't even enough leftovers for him and there he laid right in the hot lot with the swine in such a shape amen that he didn't even realize amen where he was at he didn't even really recognize what a place he got himself into and I don't know what happened amen on that day whatever that he saw himself for the Bible said he came the meaning literally that he come back into his right state of thinking and his right state of mind amen but I want you to know amen we preached this similar before but never on this line I believe there was a mud puddle somewhere in that hog lot I believe there was a water hole somewhere and that he was tending to them hogs and going and coming and thinking about the good old days amen he peered down and stooped down and in the last image he'd had of himself he saw a young man clothed in linen that had had a pretty good raising he saw a stout young boy with his hair well combed and his beard well trimmed but that day he saw a man amen that was filthy and dirty and poor and blind and naked and miserable amen and he realized I do not belong here come on Amen. Can you imagine looking around a bunch of pigs? Amen. Them right down there, the root in the mud right with them. I want you to know, friend. I expect for pigs to root. I expect for pigs to eat slop. But if I come along the roadside and Brother Bill's down in the hot lot and he's a root and a snort and a butt heads with them hot, I'm going to stop and check on Brother Bill because I don't rightly expect a dignified peddler like him to be there. Amen. I want you to know we've been hell ever since the first of the year. Amen. See, my call hell has broke loose on the church. Amen. See, like amen, men of God that you never thought anything would surprise them. They're scratching their heads. But one day I felt like being careful. And one day, amen, I felt like just forgetting it all and doing what we've always done. And I don't even want to mention that word coronavirus. I've heard that word so much, I don't never want to hear it again. Amen, but I'm telling you, we've been under attack. Amen, I feel like, amen, that we found ourselves in this place, if you will, right alongside with the world, of being afraid and fearful, of being in bad shape, of depression weighing on our people. Amen, oppression weighing on our people. Amen, division amongst our people. Amen. Amen. Nobody knowing what to do and nobody knowing how to fix it. But I come to tell you, amen, the Lord began to deal with me about a month ago. And he said, John Potter, I'd expect to see the world acting like they are. But I never thought it of you. Amen. And can I tell you, friend, amen, I come to preach to you this is a simple thought. You don't belong here. Amen. We do not belong, amen, in that common place with the world, amen, I thought the church has always set the standard, amen, to be above where the world is, amen, and can I tell you, friend, amen, the devil may tell you and try his best to convince you that you belong in the same lot, in the same hog pen, but wondering what's going to take place next, and I wonder what man mandate's going to come out and what order we're going to have to follow and what's going to happen with our currency I've been right there with you I stopped all my federal and state taxes about three months ago you say I wouldn't have done that for nothing I said by 2021 amen the IRS may be in shambles I said give it to me while you can and I'll worry about it later amen I've been rethinking that amen but we've been worried amen we've been perplexed but we've been troubled. Hey, but I come to tell you, friend, that the church does not belong in that hot pit of worry, in that hot pit of doubt, in that hot pit of fretting. Hey, but oh, oh, oh. Hey, man, there is bread at the Father's house. Hey, man, there's bread. Hey, man, just down the road a little bit. If we get up 
from where we're at and dust ourselves off and brush ourselves off. There's better things than this. Amen. Right down the road. Amen. We do not belong at this place. Amen. That's right. I told the privacy, amen, not knowing, amen, uh, uh, being unable, amen, to know what to do, amen, perplexed, confused, amen, I want you to know that I believe that the Lord's return is imminent, I believe he's coming, I believe he can come today, that he's so chose, but friend, I'd like to tell you, amen, if you take yourself out of this little pin dot of history, amen, been called 2020 and pick yourself up and look back through the years. It's been a lot worse than this than before. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. There's been a lot more death and destruction. Amen. Ask them in the middle of World War II after the bomb dropped what kind of shape the world was in. Amen. Ask them at other times in history. Ask them in the days amen, of Jesus Christ. Amen. When Roman control Amen was in effect. I'm telling you, friend, they've been rough days before. But there's one thing about it. Ever since the church was birthed, amen, the harder the persecution got, the greater the victory. The harder the battle, the greater the victory. Amen. What worries me about our hour and what worries me about us tonight, it seemed like this one. Amen. It's been somewhat different. Amen. Come on now. Don't don't act like you ain't there. Amen. I, I don't know what kind of services you've been had. I had in time past. But listen and tune me in and listen to the preaching. Back when this all first started, I'd listen to in outdoor meetings and, and, and hear Brother Sparks and preaching. Amen. He told me he's been having good services and we've been trucking along too. But the church as a whole, amen, is in this place that if we feel like that the pressure's on us, amen, to back up. Hey man, I'm telling you, I'm not even going to get it into the health aspect of it because I'm not your pastor tonight. Hey man, I believe he's dealing good with that. I'm trying to keep you safe. But friend, I'm telling you, hey man, we do not belong. Hey man, with the hogs. Hey man, a worry that are rolling back and forth. Hey man, and I listen to this commentator, not coming. I listen and I worry too. Hey man, but I've got those parts. The last week I made up my mind. The Lord said, son, you need to pass. I said, all right, Lord, I'll pass. He said, you don't need to pass bread and water. Hey, man, but he said, you need to pass worrying about what everybody's saying about it. Hey, man, what the preachers are saying, what the commentators are saying. He said, you need to get somewhere and pray about a week and find out what I've got to say about it. Hey, man, I come to tell you tonight, it ain't worried him. He knew it was coming. Hey, man, when he said, stir up the pure minds about the laying on of hands. He knew it was coming. But when he wrote his word, that there be any sick or market, let him call for the elders of church and let him pray. Amen. 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 And the prayer of faith Amen. will save the sick. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. You think it took him by surprise? But no, sir. Amen. But we're so guilty of looking at now that that young man didn't want to wait. On the farmer's heritage, he didn't want to wait on the farmer's life. He wanted what he needed then. I want it now. I want it now. I've got to have my blessing now. Amen. I want you to know, amen, we live in the church world. But they tell you they wanted it now. Amen. For the past several years. Amen. Ever since right after I got saved. And I've watched as they wanted it now. Now, 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 now. And they base their revivals on now. Now, now. Amen. Let, let, let us get in and push. Amen. For several nights. And then we'll shout. And feel the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Then we'll be all right to go a little farther. Amen. And we'll allow ourselves to be drained again. I'm telling you, it's just like the oil. Amen. I taught him the vessel. Amen. He 
it's not wrong for you to use oil. This world will require a little of you. Amen. You will burn some oil. But you've got to keep replenishing it. Amen. But oh, we lived in that now generation. But the culture has brought it right into the church. Amen. But can I tell you, friend? Amen. It's always been. Amen. That route in Chronicles. That if my people, the which are called by my name. Amen. Did you notice that? Amen. Amen. I want to tell you tonight. It does not worry me. And this is what I wanted to preach to us. It don't worry me that the world's out there riding. It does not worry me. Amen. That they're burning down our buildings and toppling our statues. It bothers me. Amen. It angers me. But it don't worry me. Amen. In the spiritual light, I expect that of them. I expect a bunch of heathens to act like a bunch of heathens. I expect a bunch of reprobates to act like a bunch of reprobates. I expect a bunch of liberals to act like a bunch of liberals. Hey, but what's worrying me is I'm never in the world. They may want to have expected a child of God that was reared up and raised up like that prodigal was right in the house of the father. They may have stooped so low as to go right down in that hog lot. The wastefulness and the depravity. Hey, Amen. And look around and say, hey, I do not belong here. But friend, I've got good news for you. Hey, Amen. If we just recognize it. And jump up and say, hey, they've been the only hope for me is I believe they still lie on at the Father's house. I believe they still read at the Father's house. And I believe they still revive. And I want you to know the devil would like to convince us that it'll never be like it was again. You know what? It may not. That prodigal said it, didn't he? He said, I'm not going to go back like I came. I'm not going to go back and expect things to be like they was before. But if the servants have bread enough to eat and to spare, he said, why would I sit here and perish with hunger? He said, I'll go make myself a servant. You know, that's the problem. Amen. It all alone. Amen. It's the church of America that feels like we've got sonship rights. They're like we're the cream of the crop. Amen. They're like we're the model standard. For in the day we go back home and say, Lord, make me a servant. Servant, then let me serve you. Yeah. It's the day the ring that you put back home and the fatted calf can be killed. Oh, we've got to realize we wasted what the Lord gave us in the beginning. That's right, that's right. I got down today, Brother Bill, and I began to talk to God. And I said, Lord, I thank you so much for just the opportunity. Amen. To kneel down and to pray. Amen. When there are so many right now tonight that are not able to kneel down. Amen. They're hooked up to a ventilator. Amen. They're sick with us, some other thing. There are some that are not privileged enough but don't know how to kneel down. But there are some that are not at liberty in their nation to freely kneel down. But I said, God, you're allowing us space and grace that I can still go in the bedroom and shut the door and kneel down and cry out and if the neighbors hear it they hear it so be it amen I'm telling you friend amen you may feel like we're doing this fine and I never come to preach the doom and gloom and despair to you but I come to preach to you tonight we do not belong in that place of fear amen that's right we do not belong in a place, amen, where we do not know, amen, how to respond, amen, to the movement of the Lord. I don't know how it was down here, but when we first opened back up at the church, and we did out of courtesy what everybody else did, we put up the signs on the back door, and we put up the signs, amen, now our church, if you can picture it, Amen. Our church would probably be like this pulpit right here. If you set your old pulpit down in our little church, it would fill it up. In the first service, we had about 15. Amen. The signs were in the back. The Duramax bottles were sitting here and there and were. Amen. Everybody, amen, come in trying to behave themselves. Amen. Am I too close? Amen. I saw, I went to church the other night and sat down. Me and Brother Matt did. 
Amen. Sit side to side. My little boy in between us. I didn't even realize I'd sit down in front of a family. And I saw them. They gathered up their purses. They gathered up their Bibles. And they jumped up. And they moved back. And they sat down in the next row back. I said, oh, man. I never been there. Never been done. Amen. Let us come in. Amen. Flop down. Amen. But, oh, amen. We were all concerned. Amen. But I'm telling you. Amen. There's no way you can socially distance an old time holiness service. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But we just don't belong there. Amen. I'm just going to preach out, Bill. There's a bunch of you tug on this shirt tail. Amen. I'm not meaning to be political or metal or gay. Uh, but I'm telling you, it worries me. Amen. Not only that stuff, that's just scratching the surface. But we do not have to bow down. Amen. To the place we're in. Amen. I'm telling you, he said he'd find a faith when it come. He said they'd be a glorious church. But without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. Amen. Amen. We've got to be that church according to the Bible standard. Amen. Where I read us at. Amen. It's not in the hot lot of despair. It's not down in the far country. Amen. Wasting what God's give us. Amen. Let it be right us in our life. But it is right there in the house of the Father. Like David said. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy that shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What a promise. Amen. I heard one tell me we may never get to go back like we used to. Amen. I said, well, you don't have to if you don't want to. Amen. But I am. Amen. I am. Amen. I thought I, 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 have, I have been careful. I got. Amen. Can I just preach to us? Amen. I thought I'd been doing more preaching than the past couple years than I ever had in my life. Amen. All this come about and I got blasted. Amen. Left and right. Amen. Because I wanted to go out preaching. Amen. So I tried to be careful and I sat there in the house. Amen. I walked back and forth and I felt like amen, that I robbed somebody and got their purse at gunpoint. And Sister Courtney said, what's the matter with you? You act me as nothing, nothing, nothing. Amen. What's wrong with you? You act miserable. Amen. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Amen. Finally, I just looked at her one day and I said, if it ain't no better than this, amen, I'd just about run down there and catch it and go home to be with the Lord. I said, because if I can't preach and go to the house of God and have revival and have a move of God, life ain't worth living anyway. Amen. You say y'all not talk like that. Brother Lindsey Savage, amen, tonight laid at rest. His family grieving. Amen, I can't say and be so spiritual to tell you. Amen, and if you're a good child of God, you won't get it. No, sir. Amen, I believe there's some good men that's already left us. Amen, but oh, I guarantee you one thing. Amen. Wherever Lindsay Savage is tonight, he ain't thinking a thing about coronavirus. Amen. It used to be. Amen. That it was just common ground for a child of God to say, hey, amen. If it ain't the Lord's will for us to leave here, amen. Then we're not going nowhere. Amen. But tonight, hey, we ready to see that place. Brian, you got you got to be careful. Yeah. Amen. amen. You got to be careful. You got to watch it now. Amen. The Lord. Amen. Been dealing with my heart the past week. I said, God, would you sanctify my vocabulary back? Amen. I'll get down here where the carpet is. That way I run. Amen. I said, would you sanctify my vocabulary back? That of being like a child of God. Amen. That I used to say, hey, amen. There'll not be one breath leave my body unless it passes through the hand of the Almighty God. Amen. We've got to go by something. I'm telling you, amen. If you looked at a cancer or a train wreck or a car wreck, they're a plane wreck or coronavirus. It don't seem like it matters much, does it? Amen. But the question I'd like to ask you, amen, is are you ready to leave? Are you ready to leave? Are you ready to go? Amen. Has the blood been applied? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed 
in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. But that's the question tonight. Amen. Oh, it worries me that if we were are where we are and asking the questions we are. And I'm not ridiculing you because I've been right there. And I told you I was going to preach to me. Amen. And I come to tell you, friend, amen, just tell my testimony. I have found myself in a place that a preacher ought not be. Amen. I have found myself in the church and in a denomination, amen, that we are where we ought not be. Amen. I'm not talking about, amen, see just how long you can stretch your Bible. Amen. Be so bold. Amen. It just coats it on and act like you, amen, want whatever's coming. Amen. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a spirit that it pits you on the other side. Amen. Of a street corner. Amen. It calls you and act more ugly than the ones that's protesting for their own side. That ain't where God would have us be. I believe we ought to stand up for the right. I believe we ought to exercise our right to vote. I believe we ought to do what we can. The mature vote ain't going to turn it around. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're standing like the I listen to Christian radio that I get some puking sick. I turn it off. They want to fight far with far. You can't put far out with far. you got to have some water to the Spirit of God. And you got to have some washing. Amen. Power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I'm telling you, friend. Amen. Tonight how we're going to get damp of what the devil's doing and show them that the only power on the face of the earth greater than the power of darkness that we're up against and that's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Whether you want to admit it or not. Amen. And I believe, amen, God allowed things to be so. Amen. But Donald Trump Amen. And his right hand is not what's going to hold back. Amen. This whole liberal agenda. But I'll tell you what to hold back this whole liberal agenda. Amen. It's some old gray headed grandmother somewhere. That's still down by the bedside. Amen. Saying, Jesus, carry just a little longer. Let me get my babies in. Let my grandbabies pray for you. Before the darkness rose, I'm telling you, friend. We got it all wrong. Amen. Can I preach what I feel? That we don't belong here. We don't belong in the hot lot. Amen. A living like they do. Amen. Oh, what do they do when they get up in the morning? Gotta check the facts. Check the case numbers. See who's riding. Hey, remember as far as I preach to myself? Let's see who's riding. Hey, Amen. See what happened last night. See what they burnt down last night. Hey, Amen. Then at five o'clock. Hey Amen. I, I, I tell you, I do not have anything to watch at home. But if I wanted to watch Devin Rashier every day at five, I could just look in my next door neighbor's window. That little old lady, 445 every day, you can be talking to her. How you doing today? Your flowers are pretty, everything looks good. Oh, I've got to go. And that big 42 inch devil hanging on the wall, she'll turn it on. Amen. And that big five foot ten devil will come on it. Amen. And tell us. Amen. How we need to go. And Pastor Andy will tell us what we need to do. And last week he come out and was so bold again. The same churches go back down. Amen. The virtual only. Amen. A ten or less no more. Amen. I come to tell you. I expect the world to worry about what he's got to say. But I don't expect the child of God to. Amen. When we talk to God in heaven, who knows the end come and the outcome, and sees the beginning and the end, and the last day, and he knows who's going to leave with, and he knows who's going to stay with, and he's got the only vaccine for it. Amen. They're scrambling around. Amen. Trying their best to get a shot before the election. Trump said, we got to have a shot by November. We got to have a shot by November. I wish he was here tonight. Because I'd like to inform him. I'll know the antidote before the virus ever come out. Amen. And his name is Jesus. And he's still got power to heal. And he's still got power to save. But I'm not going to feel like that in church. Amen. I'm telling you, friend. Amen. Why in the world are we acting like they do? 
when we drop what they need to carry it all. Hey, man. I'm telling you, we don't belong here. Amen. We do not belong in this little old place that we put ourselves in called fear. Amen. God forbid, God forgive us. Amen. That we do. It's supposed to come sometime. I'll just confess it. Amen. I'll just be real vocal and real transparent with you. We're supposed to come sometime back for a meeting. Good sister that we confident out in the spirit. Come to us. We never asked her. Amen. Pray over me. See what I mean? That one way it was. Amen. The Lord told us to hold. I don't know why. I don't know if fear would have been so much at that time. It would have hindered the move of God. I don't know if peradventure God seen somebody could have got sick and put a notch. Amen. And then lit those belts. But I come to tell you, friend. Amen. I, I told the Lord today. I said, Lord. I said, I, if I waited it all out. I wouldn't have nobody amen, get sick for nothing know where we go I wouldn't have one little elderly saint of God suffer for nothing but friend I'm telling you amen there's one thing about it there's a risk that some of us are going to have to suffer there's a risk that some of us are going to be here in some wild times and there's a risk that if we try to defend ourselves we'll be like that little couple amen that's facing charges now that's for defending what they got amen so see we can't fight fire with fire we can't fight bullets with bullets amen we can't fight this with our own names we can't fight politics with politics amen we can fight sin with the word of God and we can fight sin but with the move of the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you something far greater. Amen. Than getting sick. And that's one of our people, one of mine, to die lost and go to hell right. under our watch. Oh, right. The Lord told me today, oh, said, I see many souls that are going. Amen. Some are not going. Men are leaving. And the Lord said, But how? There are none to fill the place. And the Lord said, How I'm asking and I'm seeking out men to fill the places. And the Holy Ghost spoke with the sparks never in my life that I heard the Lord talk like he did today in prayer and said, Choose and choose and choose to be filled. And said, Some will be filled and some will not. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thought there's new churches popping up all over the countryside. You ever wonder about that? I don't under, I, I'm not going to meddle, but I don't understand that. Amen? If you are so zealful and so right and so full of, amen, of what you think you need to be full of, and you think everybody else is dead, if you've got as much as you think you've got, won't you just go down there where they're at? Amen? And just get to shouting and praising the Lord. It will rub off on them, amen, if they're as dead as you think they are. Amen? But chances are, amen, we live to see the hour, amen, that everybody wants to be a chief, and there ain't nobody wants to be an Indian. Amen, I'll come to tell you tonight, amen, I don't have no real desire to be a chief, amen, but I sure get itching sometimes to be like one of them little Apache warriors. I get this about all I can handle, amen, I get to want to just make a war cry and pull that tomahawk out, amen, I'm telling you, I know it ain't flesh and blood, I know it sounds foolish sometimes, amen, to compare it, amen, but I'd like to scout me some of them devils, amen, that's been making us afraid the past two or three months, they've been talking to the saints of God and trying his best to get us to be discouraged and trying his best to get us to stay home and trying his best to get us to be weary. Amen. I'm telling you, we don't belong in this place. We've got to get up from here. We've got to get stuff done. But we've got to get the mission accomplished. But we've got to go back to the Father's house and be reconciled and established who we are. We are the church of the living God. We are a child of God. Blood bought by His blood. Right. Amen. That's right. And I'll tell you, I've a question. Amen. Sometimes my integrity and my character. You know, it's not a disgrace to tell the Lord, Lord, make me stronger. Amen. Let me get weaker and lower. Lord, let me come humble before you that I could be strong. Amen. 
I thought Will Rogers, that humorous preacher, was preaching at that institute in L.A. where that they worked with, they met some of the most severely handicapped of California. They said that as he was preaching, he always would try to be humorous and make he meant his listeners laugh. He said those handicapped folks become lighthearted and took their mind off their pain. Some of them broken backs. Some of them were uh, uh, recovered from polio. Some of them paraplegics. And he looked out over that crowd of pitiful people, hungry people. He was making them laugh and making them not. Trying to get the gospel to them in that way. And they said, Will Rogers said, I've got to take a break. I'll be back. We'll finish the sermon. Y'all fellowship. A little bit different. Amen. More of a seminary style. Institution style. Amen. Just the deliverance of what he was doing. He said he'd come back. Amen. Off the podium. Went to the restroom. And his usher followed him. Was going to give him a towel. He was pouring the sweat. And he opened the restroom door. Wheels back turned. Didn't know the, the usher had come in the door. And said there stood Will Rogers leaning against the wall. Weeping and sobbing and crying and tears hitting the floor. He thought he was just laughing, making them have the best night of their life. And now I see sobbing, weeping. It's getting to him. So about five minutes of that, nobody knew it but the usher. He brushed it off and come back in, jumped back up there in another half an hour of just great motivational preaching and speaking. And they said, and I asked him about a man's character, you could ask three questions. What makes a man laugh? What makes a man angry? What makes a man cry? Amen. I won't tell you what this is tonight, and I, I don't I have heard a hundred million different things, I feel like, of why and what and the reason and where we are, amen, on time. Me and Brother Sparks talking about it Friday. Where are we at on the time scale of God? I come to tell you tonight. I believe with all of my heart, nothing goes on that don't pass through God's knowledge. Right. Nothing goes on that don't pass through God's hand. That's right. I don't know exactly. I don't have the answer of exactly what this is for the world, lest it would be the same purpose that it is for us. But God is trying right here at the stage setting, Amen, for prophecy. At the end of times, I believe that he's trying his best to show us gaps in our character as a church, so we can get them fixed now before it's everlasting too late. Amen. All right. He's trying to show a bunch of preachers and a bunch of pew members, a bunch of singers and a bunch of song leaders, a bunch of mommies and a bunch of daddies, a bunch of grannies and a bunch of grandpas. And if you ain't really got it, like the Bible says. You ain't got much longer left to get her fixed. Yeah. Amen. Character is oftentimes manifested in moments. Amen. Of greatness. But it's not built in moments of greatness. Character is built in little moments. Amen. I read this today. I like this. Character isn't made up in a crisis. Amen. But it's shown in a crisis. Amen. If one would be more concerned with his character and his reputation, he'd be far better off. Amen. Because reputation is what everybody thinks we are. But our character is what we really are. Amen. I'll tell you what I've been asking the Lord. If it'd be all right to make an altar a little bit. Sister Courtney Cowan. I've been asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I read about great men. I preached about great men. I have desired to be close to you, Lord. I've desired to see you move in my life. I desire for my children to be saved and filled. Desire to see folks healed. Amen. In our prayer lines, in our meetings. And I've seen that. I desire to be one that my children would tell those stories about. Amen. That, hey, when the going got tough, I seen Dad do this. And now let me tell you how Dad would deal with that. Because uh -huh. we tell those stories about our parents and our grandparents. Yeah. 
those legacies of those revivals in the 50s and the 60s and 70s, 80s and 90s, even in the early 2000s. But I won't tell you, I've been asking the Lord, Lord, I don't understand it all, but for several years, you give us such an easy time to have a move of God. He did. I'm telling you, you could, you could, you could pray. It seemed like so easy when I first got saved. Even more so when you first got saved. Some of you, the Holy Ghost was just so rich. I mean, the, the camp meetings that we've been, all been in, packed out house, praying three and four rows deep, mighty moves of God. And it was, it was seemingly so easy. Struggles that we had in those times. And I know there, there were problems, there were sicknesses, there were troubles, there were world events, I understand that. But as a whole, problems in those times seemed so bleak, so small, compared to where we are now. I don't know about you, but I feel like literally that I am in the most trying time that I've ever been in my life. Maybe you're not. I am. Preachers that I uh, really looked up to and aspired, struggling. A man's was more so maybe than others. A man's was Brother Sparks that I could call their names and you'd say, yeah, he's a, he's a preacher. He's a, he, he's a, he's a dedicated man. And uh, listen to them online and hear it right in their voice. And they're just confessing right out to the whole crowd and saying, there's been times lately that I felt like God didn't help me. I just couldn't keep going. The financial struggles on them being beyond our imagination. That's right. Troubles. Struggles. Trials. Well, it's just church stuff. What about all the rest? I won't tell you. And remember, if you don't remember nothing else that I said, and I'm not at all meant to be harsh or smart or just metal where we're at, you're probably tired of hearing about it. I am too. But if the church fails, society as we know it will soon follow their act. That's right. If the homeless church drops the ball, we're in trouble. Because I can name you a host of other denominations that dropped the ball a long time ago. We are, amen, that hope. That last hope for the lost night world. And I look around and I do not see that determination and that desire. And we'll close here. I do not see any material like I would like to as we travel about a little bit around that I feel like I could say, hey, they're, they're, they're really, really having a move of God over here, over there. Over, I mean, we're, we're having moves of God. We're having moves of God in church this morning. But I'm talking about a revival that would shake the community. That's right. Shake our country, shake our state. I know some that's had series of meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings, and they shout and shout and shout and shout and shout, but their sin don't go away. That's right. Amen. You want to tell you what revival will do? Revival will bring repentance. Amen. I said revival will bring repentance. And revival, amen, will bring confire. It's all consuming. Amen. Tonight. Amen. We need that consuming fire. Amen. But there's just something way down in my heart that still believes what this book says. Amen. That we are embarking on an hour and a time where we're going to see a move of God like we ain't never seen before. You say, preacher, I don't believe in no great big last day revival. You know, I don't know that I believe in an Azusa Street renewing. I, I'm not going to tell you that I, I fully believe that either. I, I'm not going to tell you that I believe in a great awakening like maybe in the turn of the last century. I'm not going to tell you that. But I do believe God's going to send a move of God here. That's right. He's going to send a move of God there. That's He's right. going to send a move of God there. He's going to send a move of God there. Amen. And whenever he comes, there's going to be a remnant of the people scattered abroad. Amen. That's still holding up, holding time, holding us. And still living for God. Amen. And I come to 
tell you, maybe you're on cloud nine. They've been feeling mighty fine. Hey, remember if you've been struggling, you've been worried, you've been concerned, and you've been troubled, you've been perplexed. Hey, Amen. Look at the devil right in the eye. I don't see a shoe on. Hey, Amen. I'm far off you. Hey, Amen. Was feeling this exactly what I've been feeling today. Hey, Amen. The devil has no right. Hey, Amen. To define where and who I am. I don't belong here. And I've listened to him long enough in the past little while. Tell me, just get used to it. Amen. Put you a bed and a pillow right here in the pig pen. Amen. Set you a picture on the wall and make it pretty as you can. Because this is where you've got to stay. I come to tell him this evening, I'm coming out. Amen. I'm coming out. Amen. I know what it's like. Amen. Back home. I know what it's like. Amen. What are you comparing that to? Amen. The will and the presence of God. I know what it's like to be in the will of God. I know what it's like to be in the presence of God and be in revival. I don't belong in a state of discouragement. I don't belong in a state of depression. We've got people in the homeless churches tonight. Amen. And under the sound of my voice, they're battling depression so bad. Amen. That they can't even hardly pick their feet up off the floor. I come to tell you, amen, rebuke that and send that back to hell. Amen, that don't belong in your mortal body. That don't belong in your life. Amen, that ain't the way a child of God should walk and go. And God can heal you from that tonight. Just like he can a cancer or an ailment. Amen, we just got to believe he's able. Amen. We don't belong in that place. Marriage is on tents. Amen. Places. Amen. Husbands and wives on earth. Finances. Amen. In a mess right now. Amen. Un the unknown. Amen. Put pressure on marriages. Amen. Just baffling in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't belong in that place where the world would be. Amen. To say, hey, amen. I just don't know if I can, can hold out anymore. I just don't know if I can stay with this or not. I'm telling you, amen, ma'am, you better ride that boat out. Uh, sir, you better ride that boat out. The walk God joined together. Let no man put asunder. Amen. We don't belong where we are. Amen. Feeling like we're coming apart at the seams. But these things that we're facing and fighting and battling, they ain't got no place in the child of God's life. And they don't have no place in the church of the living God. I'm telling you, you would never thought in the midst of all this that there'd be church trouble and church splits. But the devil's trying every way he can more than he was before. And I thought it was bad before that the poor people apart and divide the people of God. I come to tell you, we don't belong there. Amen. God's got better. Amen. Land for us to the willing. Amen. He's got better scenery than the hot block. You don't belong where you are. Amen. I'm telling you, if it's got you unnerved and unknowing and not knowing what to do, say, God, give me some character that I can face where we are. Amen. And have the strength to keep on doing what I always do. Keep on doing what's right. Amen. I don't know about you. We're, going, we're closing. Amen. But I'd like to see what the Lord will do right here in all this, wouldn't you? Yeah, yes, yeah. I'd just like to see what He'd do for us. Amen. Right here on Sunday night. Would you believe that right here, amen, I'm not pulling for a big explosion. I'm not. But would you believe right here on Sunday night, right in the middle of all this mess, I had one brother tell me, and I, I've kind of adopted that mindset. I've been rebuking that even in the past few weeks, too. Amen. But I, I kind of adopted the mindset if we can just get through this. Let's just get through this. And when we get on the other side of this, amen, we, we, we'll, we'll be all right. We'll do more than what we're doing. But I wonder. I wonder what the Lord will do right here in your life. Yeah. Amen. You believe the Lord would like to save somebody right here in you believe the Lord like to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost right here in this service? You believe the Lord like to touch a marriage? Amen. Why am I there, Lord? Amen. You believe the Lord like to touch a marriage right here in this service? Amen. You believe the Lord would like to touch a body 
and heal the body right here in this service. Amen. Would you like for the Lord to touch your mind and give you peace of mind? I'm telling you. Amen. There's been too many sleepless nights lately. Amen. I'd like some peace of mind. Amen. Would you like the Lord to give you peace of mind in this service? But well, I come to tell you. Amen. The birds sung this morning. Amen. They never knew. Amen. There was a pandemic. They never knew there was a boatload of trouble. Oh, Brother Bradley's preaching the other night. He said he went fishing, bluegill fishing. He said, man, would you believe that bluegill bit this as fast as the hook would go in the water? He said, I really don't think they know there was a coronavirus. I said, probably not. Amen. Oh, can I tell you? Amen. If you could see above these clouds that it's looming over us. Amen. Heaven ain't confused and confounded. And the Holy Ghost. Amen. They ain't got a short arm. Amen. Because of where we are. Amen. Oh, Sister Kelly, I'm telling you, Amen. The Holy Ghost is willing to not to touch us. Amen. The grace of God's willing to save. Amen. The Spirit of God's willing to bring revival. Amen. The presence of God's willing to touch your life tonight in this service. If we'd only be willing to receive what you're saying. Amen. All over the house. Amen. The end of this whole broken pitiful preaching. They've been called a testimony, if you will. They never could we come tonight. They never could we come. They never receive. They never want the Lord's God for us this evening. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's feel the altars. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on as she sings. Amen. If you're worthy of the the Lord, lay your hand on your neighbor. Amen. Come. Pray. Amen. Sister, brother, sister, brother, brother, brother. Right. Let's seek the Lord a while. Precious, dear Lord. Precious, dear Lord. 